Welcome to another edition of 42 Straight Years In. I'm going to crack that update. Uh, I went to up to 7-Eleven on Ross Avenue to get some gas. This young black chick was standing outside. Uh, when I was going in the door, she said, uh, Hey, man, what's going on? Right then, I know this don't mean well. It's going to lead to something else. And uh, she said, uh, I'm looking for me a man. I said, well, there's plenty around. She said, no, nah, but they don't meet my standards. I'm looking for me a millionaire. I said, there's some of those around. I said, but you ain't going to find them up here at 7-Eleven. You got to move around. So uh, she uh, didn't respond to that. I went in and paid for the gas when I was coming out. She said, uh, hey, you got a couple extra dollars? I said, yeah, I got a couple dollars, but I ain't got no extra. So I got in the car. Man, she was cursing like a song going. I drove off. That's my crackhead update. Y'all know what it is. Get your shanks out. And let's get ready to ride. Now we're going to go over to the Polunsky unit, the home of Texas Death Row. It's located in Livingston, Texas, about 40 miles south of Huntsville. And, uh, this particular day, I had took off work from Death Row to go get some recreation in. I had played a couple games of basketball and got my work in. I uh, got my workout finished, and I had my chess set. I was sitting there playing a couple games of chess. Hispanic and black inmates walked up. They're from all different games except Crips. Uh, Polanski was dominated by Crips. And, uh, they said, hey, man, we need to holler at you. Can we, can we holler at you for a minute? I said, yeah, what's up, man? And they said, hey, man, we got this old school over here. All he do is start shit, man. He run the TV. He got a remote. We be in the middle of watching a program. He'll change the TV. He don't ask nobody shit. I said, we can't jump him because he got too many homeboys. Then he's old. And he told me who he was. And I remembered this guy. He used to live in the section with me. He had went to lockup. When he got out, they moved him to another section. And I remember an incident where him and a young guy had had some words. And he had went and told the rest of the Crips. And they jumped this guy. First, it started out a head-up fight. He whooping this dude ass. Then he went to two-on-one. He still was doing good. He went to three-on-one where he went down. And he steady was saying, y'all beat that hoes ass. Beat that hoes ass. I'm looking at, man, you see this dude is already out of it. He can't defend himself no more. He punched drunk. But he still was cheerleading them on. And once before, he started a ride on the damn wreck yard. Got a couple of crooks seg behind the damn ride. This bastard didn't have but five years. So, uh, he said, man, we'll pay you. You get rid of this fucker for us. I said, no, nah, I don't want no money. So when you go into another housing area in Texas, that's called falling out of place. So when wreck was over, I had my gloves. I just eased and slid my iron in it. And I went on over in the other section. He lived in three sections. I lived in one section. He was a female guard. She cool as hell. You can tell her what's going on. And she'll turn the camera and the picket in another direction where he can't record. He record another section. And uh, he's sitting on the table with the remote in his hand when I come through the door. I just walked over there and took off on his funk ass. I had made my mind up. I said, I'm going to punish this fool. I ain't going to knock him out. I'm going to punish him. I caught him on that table, knocked him off. I went to kicking and stomping him, put them gloves on his ass. He tried to kick. Every time I hit them legs with that iron, he got to move them legs out the way. I whooped his ass good. He tried to say, man, I don't even know you. Man, I cut, cut his eye open. I know I done broke his damn nose. His lips look like Donald Duck. So I said, I'm going to make this fucker hot. He love to fuck over people. and Talk that shit because he got some backup. So uh, 
I kept beating his ass. One little crook said, hey, damn, school man, you don't think that's enough? Now, y'all know this ain't the rule at Polanski. No, you don't get in nobody else's business. I just kept right on beating this motherfucking ass. I had him screaming up in that day room. You know. The fight was over. I had to go tell the lady in the picket. Because over there they had a policy. You take your own weight. If you do some dumb shit, well, you got to stand up and, 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 and take your weight. You can't hide and get everybody put on lockdown. Because this dude was beat up in that day room. And they got a call for the gang officers to come over. And nobody don't admit to beating this guy up. They just put that whole section on lockdown until they try to find out what the hell happened. So I told her, I said, hey, man, you got to holler fight, man. No, man, I don't want to get you locked. I said, man, you got to holler fight, man, for your own protection. I said, don't worry about me. So she, she got on the telephone and called fight over in four building three section. So here they come running. Death Row Guards, the gang officers, the warden, they came over. They got to call a stretcher for his funk ass. They handcuffed me, take me to lockup. Uh, the warden over there was Warden Alpha. I know him from Cofield. So uh, taking me to lockup, he was walking, talking to me, asking me what happened. And uh, I told him, I said, man, that's a disrespectful old bastard, man. He said, well, both of y'all about the same age. So, uh, he said, but he's a gang member. So, we're going to have to, we ain't got no choice but to lock you up. He's a gang member. He said, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and go and go to lock up. I stayed in lock up three days. They ran disciplinary on me. And I was found guilty. Sentenced me to 10 days cell restriction. They reduced it from a major case to a minor case. Fighting without a weapon. And uh, gave me 10 days cell restriction, 10 days commissary restriction, 10 days rec restriction, 10 days visitation restriction, and three hours extra duty. That's my punishment. They let me out, send me on back to my housing unit. But uh, they locked, after he came from the hospital, they locked him up. And uh, by Warden Alfred knowing me, he called me over to the office. He says, hey, man, we're going to have to transfer that guy, man. He wasn't worrying about what he going to do to me. Worrying about what I'm going to do to his ass. I'm the one got the record to show that I've been doing the doing. This fool ain't been doing shit but agitating, wiring up shit. So uh, they transferred him to another prison. Uh, yeah, once we was at a, Yeah, before we go any further on the chess tournament... Uh, between me and Sock Walker, you can go over on his channel and look at it. It's recorded live. I won three to one. It's kind of hard to play because we got the lights and the damn bugs was all over the chest. Said bugs every damn where. It's kind of hard to play under those conditions. But uh, he said he want to play the whoever reached ten first. Uh, you can go look at it live on on Sock Walker's channel. Yeah, once uh, at Ramsey in 1977, uh, occasionally we, Ramsey, we worked so damn hard that we could get all our crops in. We didn't need another prison to come help us do nothing. Well, Ramsey 1 and Ramsey 2 worked together. Out of those two prisons, we get all our crops in. Ramsey's 12,000 acres. So we go over to Dyerton which at the time, Darrington was a small-ass unit. They hadn't built the new building on Darrington. It was only four cell blocks and eight dormitories. That was the Darrington unit, real small. It didn't house maybe a 1,000 inmates, if that many. And uh, we go over to Darrington to help them get the sweet potatoes in. <coughs> they take the horses, the dogs. They already be there waiting on us when we get there. And the guards, they already there. The old Lord was already sitting on his horse when we got there. And Cat drove up in the warden's car. Cat loved to stand on top of his car. So these guys done heard about Wildcat. It's kind of hard to be in prison back then and now you ain't never heard of Wildcat. A lot, almost a lot of inmates know who this man is. 
lot of them ain't never seen him in action. And you will get to understand why he made Warden so fast. Because he's a motherfucker. And he know how to handle inmates. The way they handled them back in the day. You couldn't do none of that shit now. You, they put him in prison. He wouldn't last 30 days as a warden. First female guards couldn't even deal with this man here. And he couldn't get ready for female guards. Well, anyway, when we get to Darrington, Wildcat's standing on top of his car. So he started talking shit. He went off in his he went off into a zone. He was telling the warden on Darrington. Damn, no wonder these sorry son of bitches can't work. They all standing around looking. Get them sorry son of bitches to working. That's what he was telling them, the Darrington warden. So when Darrington go up with the house trying to get their inmates to work, dudes on Darrington ain't under the pressure we under on Ramsey. Ramsey inmates don't, ain't no fucking standing around. We know exactly what to do. Ain't no be no standing around looking crazy like we lost. We, we, know, we don't even operate like that. You can't do that kind of shit with old Lord look like you lost. You better know what the hell is going on. So Cat, you know saying? That's okay, Warden. You ain't got to get them sorry motherfuckers to work. I'll just shoot a couple of these motherfuckers. He pulled out his 357 with the busting caps in there. Pow, pow, pow. That's a perfect sign for old Lord. He took his 12 gauge out. Booyah, booyah. Man, if Derek and guards getting off the horse, even they warden was ducking like a son of a bitch. Cat went to talking shit. Get them sorry son of bitches out the way. He called us. We all lined up ready to go. He said, my number one hole, y'all get to work. Oh, Lord, he, he started his shit. You niggas, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Off to the races we go. Boy, these motherfuckers ain't never seen no shit like this. That had heard about this man, ain't never seen him in action. Man, uh, we came, we stayed over there and ate lunch at their prison. We didn't bring food with us, so we had to eat Darrington food. Their food was pitiful compared to Ramsey. Man, we were complaining, man, nobody want to eat this bullshit. So we was coming in, the head turnkey in their hallway, he hollered out, when, we, when they was bringing one hole in, he said, uh, you motherfuckers clear the hallway. Here come that badass Ramsey unit. Cat leading the way. Cat and Red Rider, they walking in the front of us. They, these people, they were hard. But they made sure the inmates who they supervised were going to eat every man were going to get full and we'll get some food. They go in the child first and stand around. The man, and even Cat said, damn, this is some sorry ass fucking looking food. He was telling the kitchen manager at Darrington, he said, you couldn't work for me. You too damn sorry. He said, I mean, you can't feed my inmates no shit like this. So we, we didn't have no choice but to eat. So we got to go work the second half. Man, i never forget that, man. Them guys on Darrington, when they come in the child, some of them guys were saying, man, I don't know how y'all exist with no motherfucker that crazy. And most all the old convicts, they love cat. If you scrape up and go ask him for something, he'll do it for you. Now, I don't understand that many things you can go ask the man for. Ramsey was a wide open prison. Once you went to work and came back in, you really could do what the fuck you wanted to do. You, you ain't got to ask nobody shit. For some reason, they love to go in there and try to talk to Cat. Well, you could go to Bear, and Bear probably do it for you faster than Cat would. I never understood that. Bear sitting right there. You got to do is go ask him. Anything Cat can do, Burr can do. I mean, anything that that warden can do, you can ask Burr. He do the same damn thing. He ain't got to get shit approved by Burr. He approve it his damn self. Yeah, but a lot of inmates who go in there, they didn't heard about him. I think he's some weak. And go in there and he clown the ass. Because you wasn't straight up. You ain't got nothing coming from him. And I've seen him help a couple guys out. I said this in another video. This guy went in there and told him, man, he said, man, I, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm innocent of this crime, man. I ain't sold no damn drugs. I was a working man. He said, they took me away from my family, man. They wanted to lock my brother up, bust him for dope. They couldn't get him, so they got me. And you know, Cat didn't even put his man in the field. He could look at this man and tell he was speaking from his heart. And this guy didn't call him Cat. He called him Warden Emerson. 
and he gave him a job day one, put him in the furniture factory. Now it's rare they do some shit like that back in the day. Everybody hit them damn fields. If you was too damn old to go to the field, they put you in the garden squad. But your ass was going to work. You was going to work somewhere. I didn't give a damn. You had one arm, one leg, blind. Everybody had a job assignment, and you was going to it. Everybody. On a work day, their cell blocks be empty. Only people be there is inmate guards. That's it. Everybody else ass is at work. And also, we was able to do our time a little bit better. Because you stayed busy so much, you didn't have time to worry about all your problems and all that shit. You didn't have time. You had to worry about how you're going to survive that damn work. It wasn't no guarantee if you went to the field that you was going to make it back to your housing unit. It wasn't no guarantee it's going to happen. Now, when I first got to Ramsey, when they first transferred me from Ramsey 2 to Ramsey 1, we had a field boss carry one hole he called Clint Eastwood. He, he had a cigar in his mouth. He had the horse. He, he way he ride on his horse ride, just like Clint Eastwood. But he's a sorry son of a bitch. Every day this sorry motherfucker get two people disciplinary. I wouldn't give a damn how hard we work. Two people got disciplinary. Every damn day. So once we was working up at the front of Ramsey, at the front gate where you first come in, I had a guy in the squad with me named JT. JT jumped up on that horse with him, took that gun from him, and beat the hell out of Clint Eastwood. That's how we ended up with old Lord. The rest of them guards at Ramsey, they couldn't deal with one of them. We had quite a few guys in that squad who would fight back. You just going to have to kill them. Now, they didn't mind the work. They ain't even take them ass whoop. Right, quite a few guys in there going to fight back. You're going to have some problem out of them. And uh, so that's why he went and got old Lord out of retirement. The man had retired. And Cat went and got him specifically to take one hole to work. The rest of the guards at Ramsey couldn't do nothing with us. Captain Bad Mike could have did something. Uh, Sergeant Jack, he's a sorry son of a bitch. He may could have took one hole. The rest of them, we run over him. They didn't stand a chance. Because they got to get off that horse in the evening when we get in. They got to give the gun up and get off the horse. But at Ramsey, they had a Browning automatic rifle mounted at the back gate. And occasionally, there'd be a fight out there, and they cut loose with that Browning automatic. When you hear that son bitch go off, you know if one of them slugs hit your ass, it's a wrap for you. And I, I guarantee you, they break the fight up quick. They fire off a couple rounds, and, and that's a wrap for the fight. Every evening we come in, whoever work in the back gate, they cock that Browning automatic, have it pointed right at our ass every day. Now, when the federal court started cracking down on them, they took that gun down. East Ham had the same damn thing. They made they took it down uh, when the federal courts got involved. Uh on the chess tournament between me and Sock Walker, you can go on Sock Walker's uh, channel and look at it live. I won three to one. He want to play the first one to ten. There ain't no problem. It was kind of hard to play under old conditions. Bugs was all over the damn place because we got the lights. Uh, yeah. But I don't use that for no excuse. I still enjoyed the game. Had a good time. Y'all follow me over on Patreon. Y'all know what it is. Keep your shanks ready. These fuckers is broke right longer now. They looking crazy, picking up shit off the ground, looking for the, that crack they dropped or three months ago. They walking around looking all crazy. Y'all like and subscribe. And I thank you for watching.